Hello and welcome to our latest traction track guide for Assetto Corsa Competizione. Today is the turn of Circuit Riccardo Tormo, otherwise known simply as Valencia. This track is now available for you to buy through the 2023 GT World Challenge DLC pack, along with three new cars. On the face of it, things appear to be much like your bog-standard modern European circuit. I'm thinking Barcelona and Misano, for example. However, once you get behind the wheel and take to the tarmac, you're going to have a lot of fun. Valencia has an almost hidden flow to it that makes it a dream to drive, especially in this new Porsche 992 GT3R that I'll be hustling in this video. This is also our first look at the updated tyre model and physics of version 1.9, and if you want to hear more details about this, make sure you check out our race night livestream from Tuesday evening. Now, some quick context and information for you before we begin. As always, this lap was done in hot lap mode in optimal conditions and fairly cool temperatures, around 16 degrees on track and 18 degrees ambient. The lap was recorded on my first day of lapping this place, so although this guide should give you a good idea of how to be fast enough around here, there's definitely a little bit more time on the table for me personally, so make sure you experiment with lines and driving techniques. It also means that there may be minor tweaks to the BOP and other elements between this lap being set and the launch of the DLC, so try not to read too much into the exact lap times. Focus on improving your PB one corner at a time. Setup wise, my teammate, colleague and personal engineer Ross McGregor has created the one used in this video and you can download it through the link in the description, along with setups for the new Ferrari 296 and the Lamborghini Huracan Evo 2. In fact, the Porsche setup you can download is actually better and a couple of tenths faster than the one I've used here, but since I'd already recorded the lap and the lines are basically the same, I'm going to show you the slightly slower one anyway. Right, boring bit out of the way, let's get on with the lap. Stick to the right as you head towards turn 1, Aspar. Mount the stripy tarmac separating the pit lane exit and hit the brakes as you pass the 100 meter board on the left. Another reference you can use is the orange access point on the same side, but in a hot lap situation you can also use the black rubber marks on the white line that you're driving on. This is the easiest to spot with nobody around, but don't rely on it in a racing situation. Turn in just as the stripy section closes, shifting down to 4th and aim to get your left front all the way up on the green concrete. As early as possible, get back on the power, opening out your steering and use, well, pretty much all of Spain on the exit. Track limits here define lenient. Test it out yourself and see just how much you can get away with. Stay to the right approaching turn 2, braking just before the white strip of tarmac crossing the green section. The first of many second gear corners, try turning in a little bit late, easing off the brake as you roll towards the apex to rotate the car. Place your left front on the inside curb, applying throttle as you get there and driving out to the curb on the right. Keep your left side wheels on the curb though, track limits are a bit less friendly here. Give yourself a wide entry to turn 3 by turning in later than you think and take all of the green concrete. This will give you an optimised line on the left hand curb as you break into turn 4, Nico to roll. Whatever happened to him by the way. Again, break just before the white strip of concrete and shift down to 3rd. Or 2nd? 3rd. 2nd. It honestly depends on your momentum, line, etc, etc, as to which gear you use through here in the Porsche. I like third on a hot lap where I can carry the momentum, but maybe second in a race. Be really careful under braking as well, it's very easy for the car to step out in the kerb. Just make sure you're heading in towards the apex reasonably early to help the stability and nail that green concrete on the inside. As for the exit, run as wide as you can without touching the gravel, that's your track limit. Turn 5 can be tricky too, as there's limited reference points and it's easy to lose the rear on entry. You have to turn smoothly, no over-aggression, and make sure you don't turn in too early as you will pay the price throughout. I ease onto the brakes, change down to second after a brief delay for stability purposes, and then nail the green concrete again on the inside. Get on the power nice and early for that burst of acceleration, opening up your steering and heading out for the exit curb. Watch for oversteer though. Once again, it's the gravel that marks your track limits. Haul yourself immediately over to the right for turn 6, Angel Nieto. Start braking at the white strip of concrete, with two wheels still on the circuit. Track limits are strict here, so don't let yourself drift too wide on entry. Trail brake in, holding off a tiny bit on turn in, and aim to cut across the inside kerb, on the throttle as early as possible. Again, watch for oversteer, this corner can be tricky, and let the car run all the way out over the exit kerb on the right. Limits are tight here, keep your left wheels on the stripy kerb, and you should be good. Take a breath while you have the chance, but get ready to hold it again as you fire through the flat out kink at 7, and prepare to brake for turn 8. Stay out to the right hand side and straighten your car, braking just before the white strip of concrete. I'm sensing a theme here. Shift a second and ease the car in for the left hander. It's all about managing your brake pedal and speed. Slowly squeeze off the brake as you increase your steering angle, and the corner will come back to you. 
It's a long and slow ordeal. I found it best to start slightly wider and then cut back across for a later apex over the kerb. And again, early throttle is key. On this particular lap, I did slightly miss the mark. You want to be a touch tighter and use the kerb so you can really pull yourself out of the corner as straight as possible. The early throttle means you will run out nicely onto the exit kerb, just make sure you take advantage of it and keep your steering lock on as you cut the inside of turn 9 and set yourself up for the tricky turns 10 and 11. 10 is just a decoy, a braking zone for the right hand hairpin, and I try to angle my car so that I can brake initially in as straight a line as possible as I'm crossing the inside kerb. Then aim for the outside kerb on the left and turn in just before you reach the end of it, rolling off the brakes as you do so. Then it's all about patience. Let the car rotate, and once you get that bite and are heading back to the inside, get on the power hard. Use all of the track on the outside. Again, track limits seem to be inside wheels on the outside kerb. Stay over to the left as you hurtle towards the tricky turn 12, probably the most unpredictable corner on the course. Start by braking just before the white concrete strip. Surprise, surprise. Shift down to third and turn in soon after. Your aim here is to get up nice and close to the green sausage kerb on the inside without bottoming out on it. You can ride it as long as your speed and angle is correct and you have a soft landing, but this is something you'll have to experiment with a little bit. For me in the Porsche, I like easing back on the power just before the apex. It seems to settle the car nicely as you ride the kerb. Even if you get this first phase right, you aren't out of the woods just yet. The exit is crucial because these kerbs aren't exactly friendly. <laughs> Finally another Porsche! Oh no! What are you doing, John? Follow the kerb around to the left, and as it's ending, begin drifting out wide to the right in preparation for the final corner. Turn 14, Adrian Campos, is quite simply a joy to drive. Keep it pinned all the way in, and start braking just after the kerb on the right begins. Control the car as you slow it down, straightening things up along the stripey kerb, and once you get down to second gear, just as the kerb ends, roll off the brake and haul yourself towards the inside kerb. Use the camber to your advantage, aiming to get your left front well up on the stripey kerb, maybe even the green. Once you get there, nail the throttle, open up the steering, use all the road on the exit, making sure you keep your left sides on the kerb, and power towards the line to complete your lap of Ricardo Tormo. Now let's show you the full lap, uninterrupted. So there's your lap, and as I said, there is still work for me to do in terms of finding those extra tenths here and there, but this should hopefully help you guys get up and running at a decent speed. My time in this video was a 30.6, and I believe the pro drivers will be looking to get into the high 29s in these conditions. A solid lap time for competitive online racing will likely be around a mid-133, whilst for those of you learning the circuit, you can try and aim to get under the 138 mark. Valencia isn't a track I expected to love quite as much as I do. It's a 2.5 mile ribbon of driving satisfaction. You can see why it's so popular among motorcycle fans and GT racers. To finish things off then, let's go for a 10 second summary. Head into Portugal through turn one, and maybe it's France. Carbon T2, Carbon T3, watch Carbon T4, second, third, second, I don't care. Prioritize exit speed and Yeto smoothly does it into eight, watch your braking into 11, mile G through 12, not quite a full yeet. Slide your way down the hill over the curb and out of Campos.
thanks for watching and make sure you check out the rest of our content whilst you're here. We have track guides for every single circuit on ACC as well as reviews for the latest content drops and general guides for pretty much everything else in the game. Oh, and don't forget to follow the link in the description for those setups. That's it for me today, so until I see you next time, keep it pinned, thanks for watching, and I'll see you out on track.